Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Different World YouTube channel. I hope you all out there having a wonderful day like your girl and if not, just manifest, plan, and prepare for a better one because I guarantee you all it is surely coming to you guys for sure. If this is your first, second, or third time to my YouTube channel, welcome, happy to have you guys and welcome back. Before you guys leave, definitely hit that subscribe button uh, as well as hit that notification bell so when I drop content, you guys come into Different World and you come and learn about your girl. And speaking of coming and learning, you guys, uh, for those who need to know a little bit more about me, I'm an author, motivational speaker, and CEO of my own small business, Third Eye Entertainment LLC, a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain you guys all at once. So again, first, second, or third time, it don't matter. Just hit that subscribe button for your girl, yeah? All right, you guys. So today is uh, Wednesday, hump day, you guys. Happy hump day to everybody out there. We're getting through it. Um, second week, or I guess the first full week of March. Uh, last week, it was the first, and so I dropped my podcast pun, uh, uh, interview. You guys know on Wednesday, we do our podcast content, so this one is no different. Uh, well, yeah, in the sense of uh, it's Women's History Month, and so I'm just going to be honoring and, and showing love to all the ladies out there that have given me the opportunity to shine and, and go on their platform and sharing my story and promoting my business in my book what if a controversial paradigm shift and uh, this lady young lady right here um, we've actually collaborated twice and uh, this is my this was my second uh, podcast interview with her this year um, I did one last year previously and so this was gonna be from uh, the lovely Gabrielle Krishlow of hot topics I had an amazing time talking with her uh, during black history month talking a black about Black History Month in regards to entitlement and whether we feel, do I feel as a black person are we entitled? Hell yeah, we are. <laughs> you know, but <laughs> that's uh, that's why you guys got to watch that interview to see my answer for that and in depth of as to why I think you know black folks should be entitled to some sorts of things. Not all, but you know some things we should be. Um, so without further ado, you guys, and me just sitting here yip yapping, check out her audio interview. And once we're done, I'll get uh, come back on and tell you guys a little bit more about what's going on in Difference World. Well, yeah, here. Hello, 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 everyone. It's your girl, Gabrielle. Welcome to a brand new episode of Hot Topics. This is the uh, Black History Month edition of Hot Topics. So you know, this is the month where it's everything black, right? It's black business, it's black authors, it's black podcasters, it's black business owners, it's black, 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 black. <laughs> uh, and most importantly, it is black history. And uh, this is, the, we should be talking about black history all year, but this uh, is, the most common time that we talk about black history and we promote black voices and we talk about black issues. So consider this our uh, Black History Month edition of Hot Topics. Welcome to the show. I'll just tell you briefly what the show is about. So this is the show where we like to explore a variety of different topics from an educational point of view, right? So, um, when I do the show, I like to educate you guys. I like to teach you guys, right? So as this is part of my company, a Step Ahead Tutoring Services, I'm all about learning. I'm all about teaching. And so that's what I like to do in this post podcast is teach you things, right? So I like to look at this as an educational show. And I am... I have a returning guest to the show for Black History Month edition of Hot Topics. So my returning guest, well, before I get to my returning guest, let me tell you the title of this episode. And I'm interesting, interested to see where this conversation is going to go. So the title of this episode is, Are Black People Entitled to Things? Ooh, it sounds like a steamy topic, right? Are Black people entitled to things? I couldn't think of a better title. Sorry, guys. But we are going to talk about entitlement. We're going to talk about are Black people 
should things just be given to black people? Is there an expectation that black people should get things, should have things? This is something that <clears throat> has been on my mind for some time. And, you know, I'm looking forward to diving into this conversation. So are black people entitled to things? That is a topic for today. And my returning guest was going to help me out is different Caldwell. She is coming back on to the hot topics. She was on an episode about Juneteenth. So check that episode out, Juneteenth. And she is coming back to the show. So let me just tell you briefly about who she is. So different, she always knew that she was meant for greatness. However, she understood to become the person she was meant to be, it would take fixing her inner issues that plagued her past. It was not until she found the courage to do something <clears throat> about her depression and dismiss the notion that Black people don't do therapy. So she is all about healing. She is all about self-care and loving yourself. All right. Oh, hi. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, Gabby. I'm about that. Everything's been going good and well up until the time I take my interview. Then it's when everything wants to start going crazy. But I'm doing well. Thank you for having me back. Happy to be back on the Hot Topic Show. Hey to everybody out there listening and watching. Yes, my name is different. Spelled D-I-F-E-R-N-T. I'm an author, motivational speaker, and CEO of my own business, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC. And we are a business that strives to bring social awareness to society throughout the products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain all at once. So, again, thank you for having me back on your show. Happy to be here, especially during this time, Black History, you know, month 2023. Thank you for having hey, me on the show. Thank you for coming back, you know, and, and thank you for helping me tackle this topic. You know, this is definitely a, a hot topic here. So, you know, thank you yes. for being a brave soul and, and taking uh, <clears throat> and tackling this with me. So my, my thinking, you know, when I came up with the question is there's a lot of talk about when it comes to, you know, black people, there's a lot of talk about, you know, reparations and um, there's talk about, you um, like families whose, whose, whose land was stolen by white people and, you know, and their descendants are trying to claim the land back. So, you know, there's land ownership, there's reparations, there's, uh, there's voting rights. And so now I wanted to have your take on, um, <clears throat> do you, like, do you think black people should you know, should just be given, given land or should they, should they get reparations? And even when it comes to reparations, there's talk about what kind of reparations, right? So is that just straight up cash? Is it resources? You know, what is it? So, so I wanted to hear your take on, on, um, on this topic on or whatever comes to mind when, you know, when, when you think about entitlement and, and black people? You know, I have, I tackled this question in my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift? I actually asked that question. What if black folks were given reparation for, you know, the years of hardship, racial hardship that we were faced with? And I think we actually talked about this the last time we were on the show. You, you asked, how do I feel about reparations? And I think my answer still kind of remains the same. However, um, as you live and learn, you grow. Um, what I know now was was different and how I would feel about it now when it comes to reparations or entitlement with black folks or us uh, uh, basically waiting, you know, for, for the sky to turn green when it comes to white folks admitting to the wrongdoing and giving us the rep reparations that they promised, uh, that 40 acres we knew, that they promised to our ancestors. Is that day going to ever come, Gabrielle? Probably not. Um, how do I feel about it in regards to us? Do we, should we? Yeah, of course we should. But in reality, you know, being realistic within ourselves, I think it would be just better for us to get over that fact and stop expecting them for them to give us the reparations and go out and get it ourselves. And that starts with 
and, and then there's such of what I was telling you before we started, uh, uh, fixing the inside of us from the out, you know, getting our mental health in order, you know, breaking that mental bondage and change of what we've been through in the past. Um, looking back as far as, you know, why we, as far as the reason to us to, you know, the racial hardships and why it takes us twice as long and it's twice as hard as us to get ahead in life is because of the financial and economical, you know, instability that we have when it comes to, for instance, going to get loans for opening businesses or, you know, half of us, you know, a handful of us. There's a lot of us that go to college and graduate, but in, in retrospect of how many of us out there, it's not a lot that go. And so um, when I say, you know, us taking that, that, that toll in our own hands and giving ourselves or taking our own reparations, uh, that in my opinion is where it starts us just breaking that mental change and, and stop expecting them to give what they're not going to give. <laughs> it's been 400 years, and so if they haven't given it to us now, I'm never going to do so. So let's so. You know, let's kind of <clears throat> let's refresh refresh mm -hmm. our three, right? So what let's let's start with the basic question. What What is it? What is reparations? My definition or the definition of reparation? I got to look it up now. My med de my definition is yeah, giving definition, back to people yeah. old, paying people back, you know, or, or making them whole again, you know, for a hardship that they faced. And so, I guess in 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 some of one word, payback. <laughs> well, my understanding is it's sort of you're paying black people. You're like black, like descendants of slavery. They're mm -hmm. getting um, compensated for that. So like their descendants are being compensated well, for like their ancestors um, during, during like while they were enslaved. It's, it's like getting compensated for that yes. financial yes. or resources. That's actually, yes, that's true. But I don't think it just it, it deals with just black folks because it's also it's a true story with the the uh, Japanese concentration camps. Once they were free, they were actually given reparations and paid for their hardship. It's just we were the only ones that were promised it and never given. So, and so in terms of reparations, what what is that? What do you what does that look like to you? Well, the definition of it when it came from, you know, the white man <laughs> paying back what they owe us for the pain that they've caused us, uh, that's my definition of reparation. But as far as how we attain reparation or if we, you ask the question, are we entitled to it? Mm -hmm. Of course we are. Yes, we are. But are we going to ever receive it from the other end? No. And so how are we going to obtain that re uh, reparation, in my opinion, is by going out and getting it ourselves that makes sense so getting it how what are you going and getting ourselves how do we do that building in the black community when they like i said getting our mental health in order coming together as one you know how they do it you know in the chinese community where they're so tight-knit they don't go to the outside for help they come they keep it all in that one community you know how we had it you know back in the day in the 1920s when we they had um the tulsa uh a riding there was a you know wealthy black community out there and we had black wealth then and so it's not gonna happen overnight but you know this generation it seems to be as a generation is taking uh heed to it and taking their part and, and getting out in life and i've also noticed more black people going to college and getting themselves degrees and better jobs and so over time that's my opinion what's going to take you know us getting out there having better jobs, and getting in the market, coming together as one, getting our mental health in check, as well as, and that includes healing tra childhood trauma, uh, better parenting skills, financial literacy, uh, increasing literacy rate, <laughs> decreasing dropout rate in the black community when it comes to education. And so, and as well as, you know, when it comes to people with higher platforms in the black community, such as rappers and actors and social media influence. It's going to take, you know, them as well coming to the table and using their platform to reach out, you know, to the, to the public and tell them, hey, 
let's come together, let's do this, let's do that, X, Y, Z. So that's in my opinion. <laughs> Hopefully I make sense. Yeah, so I think what you're talking about is, is like, when it comes to, is um, let me see if I got it. So are you talking more of like, creating our own resources so so not looking to the government to pro so things like not just um, creating but building from what we have right so when it comes to like black wealth for example so it's like buying from our own people as opposed to you know outside of the race exactly okay not, well, I'm not saying don't buy outside of the race, but as much as you support, you know, Abercrombie and French and all, not French, but all those high-end Gucci's and Louis Vuitton, support your fellow brother and sister that's up and coming and that got the same skin tone as you. Not saying you shouldn't, you know, if that's what you like and that's what, you know, what you want to do, I can't stop you. But just as, you know, people who don't know you, never will know you, Give that same energy to the same people that know you and you know and love and that came from the same place that you come from. So I'm not saying not to support other businesses, but definitely not not support black business, support them as well. So put more energy into building back black businesses and mental health and education, things like that, and doing it within our own community. As well as prison with reform, you know, with, you know, blacks having a higher rate of going to jail. And when they come out of jail, you know, not being able to get back and get, get acclimated with society because of their past. And so as well, taking, you know, our community, helping those out in need, you know, it's already, I see a lot of organizations out there, but we need more that help those. It's like a second chance programs, I think they call it out here. For those that you know, you know, made some mistakes in the past, but you know, want a second chance, and so that helps as well. So, in term, so I think that's a gen like, is that generally a general thing for prison reform? Like any anyone? Because I know, like with felons. They, but we're talking about our people. Of course, there's anybody that's in prison, but if we're just talking about the topic of Black people and the main yeah, issues yeah, in our community, that's one of it. So, yes, I'm sure I'm, I'm, this ain't about, you know, <laughs> the other races. This is, you know, for our people in general. Of course, I'm, I'm not a racist and, you know, for all people, but when it comes to my people and taking the acknowledgement and then and using our voices, like you said, the Black voice, you know, that's where I have to do my part then. So, of course, prison reform overall, but as I stated before, the African-American community, especially in the male, black male, they seem to have a higher rate at going to jail and staying there longer. And when they are finally released, they have a hard time adjusting back into you know society. And so there, are, they need to be more programs out there that are for people, you know, uh, former inmates, black, white, you know, Hispanic that are, you know, that allow for them to, you know, adjust to society and be back into society. Imagine, you know, <laughs> when they do that, how how that helps the black community, you know, this is such a high rate. So what do you think contributes to, um, you know, black people, the higher, you know, they're more likely to, to go to prison. So what do you think contributes to that? Racial undertone. What do you think is the cause of that? Racial undertone. I mean, mm -hmm. I've, I've seen it and uh, I've looked at to where, you know, a white guy and a black guy, you know, they unfortunately, you know, sexually assaulted a woman. However, you know, the black man gets sent to prison for, you know, 25 years to life. And the white guy, you know, he just gives community service and probation. <laughs> and so... No. What, what, what other problem would that be? They did the same equal weight of crime, you know, cause the same amount of pain to their victims, but yet one has a lesser crime and one has a, a more heavier, a more heavier, stiffer punishment than the other. Why is that? Racial so, undertone. You know, so now, racial injustice. yeah. So now, 
kind of bringing it back to the question now, you know, uh, in terms of black entitlement, do you think like the law should just, you know, like give black people a pass or, or, you know, when it comes to, you know, when it comes to sentencing, when it comes to like, do you, like, do you think black people people should pass? I don't say give us a pass, just treat us fairly. Cause we're no better than any other race walking this earth, but just treat us fair. Treat us how you want to be treated. I'm not saying, you know, give us a pass, let us do what we want. It's not saying, you know, there's some of us in our, in our, <laughs> in our pool that, you know, got the bad gene, you know, and it's just like that in every culture, there are some bad apples. So if we do that, you know, give all, you know, the black people pass, some of them are going to abuse it. So I wouldn't say give us a pass. I just say treat us fairly. Treat us how you would want to be treated. And and when you say treat us fairly, what does that look like? Either equal amount of punishment. So as I said with the with the early example, when it comes to two, you know, prisoners, you know, what they did, their crime was the same amount, you know, uh, uh, distribute the equal amount of justice. If you're giving one person 25 to life, get that same, uh, the other person 25 to life. You're going to give, you know, the white guy probation, give the black guy probation, just keep it fair. Okay. So let's, let's talk about uh, affirmative action. Um, Are you, Mm -hmm. I don't know how, are you familiar with that? How much do you know about that? I am. I'm familiar with affirmative action Uh, and I am for affirmative action. Um, it, It has sent a lot of black people, well, not just black people, people of color um, to school and it's allowed for, you know, better job opportunities. And so, um, yeah, thank God for <laughs> affirmative action because without it, you know, it would be extra. It's already hard for us, but it would be basically impossible for black people without affirmative action. So just <clears throat> to briefly define it, uh, affirmative action is pretty much like schools not um, not schools used to have policies that um, didn't accept black people to colleges and now affirmative action is you know getting rid of those policies and um, not making race a factor uh, when it comes to acceptance I, I hope I did I get that right or how was what do you from my understanding what it was is that basically keeping the status quo, having to let a, a certain amount of number of, of people of color into the school so that it doesn't look like it was such of a white school or a, a desegregated school, as well as within the job, if you notice, it's, it's how they have, well, in general, uh, one company will have at least, you know, four white people, one black, one gay person, hey, that's affirmative action, because they got a person of color and a person that's part of the gay community. So, hey, they're not racist and they, you know, believe in inclusion. So that's, you know, affirmative action on the job side as well as in school, keeping the status quo and keeping people happy. Yeah, because I know, like, you know, Blacks, when it came to, <clears throat> when it came to education, you know, schools were segregated, right? You know, mm-hmm. Blacks went to their own schools, Whites went to their own schools, and then the when it came to the black schools, like it, it, uh, it was like less, it was like less books and the buildings were falling apart, right? It was oh, less okay. care yeah. for the school and then the white schools were prettier and nicer and cleaner, right? So do you, mm-hmm. so now kind of making up for the past, do you think school should just, okay, we're, we're letting any, we're letting anybody in. So you know, we're, as long as you're black, come on in. It doesn't matter your grades. It doesn't matter uh, your, if you've had any criminal history, as long as you're black, come on in. We just need to fill a status quo. <laughs> oh, well now. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> now, we said letting anybody in. <laughs> That's anybody. Um, man, I... That's, that's not a hard question to answer, but you don't want to give, you know, a wrong answer to that question. So um, I guess how I would feel about it is not, I'm not saying 
not just let anybody in, but go through the you know regular process and the scope and the screening of an application process. If that person is qualified, regardless of their skin color, their background, where they come from, their religion, uh, their, their sexual origin, uh, whatever the case may be, as long as they, their grades suffice, they, they you know got the money to pay. Because at the end of the day, even though it's about education, it's also a money system as well. So if, if those elements, they meet those requirements, then yes, let them in, you know. So I don't know about letting anybody in, but anybody that qualifies. <laughs> All right. Regardless of this, important, right? Like this is talk about yeah. oh, it's reverse racism, right? Because you know you're letting all these mm -hmm. people of color in, and you know you're not letting all you're discriminating against white people, right? And that's the argument with affirmative action. <laughs> that's and, funny that you say that because I don't know if you remember, um, maybe like just like seven, eight years ago. It was a girl, and then she went viral. Something stay mad, Becky. Um, but she, her case went all the way to Supreme Court, arguing that uh, some something about LSU didn't let her in school, and it was because of affirmative action. And so, I know it was Texas A and M. She wanted to get in, and because of you know, she felt like all of the scholarships are are the spots that you know for kids that didn't do so well. It all went to people of color or black kids, and so she sued the school. It basically went all the way to the Supreme Court, but the Supreme Court, you know, shot her down and said, no, it is what it is. Your grace to move on. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, she just went mad. That's what the state mad Becky and all the Becky with the good hair and mm -hmm. thing. That's what that started. From. And so, yes, there have been people that have tried to play their race role reversal card when it comes to affirmative action. But if you really look at it in its totality, who's still, you know, benefiting, benefiting from it? more than you know whites or blacks because even though we're still getting into you know the schools we you still get money off of us you're still you know getting paid so why complain right right and, and and you know you bring up a you know a, a very important point which is it's about are you qualified right so it's i mean yeah you know there's there's more attention to race in terms of you know selection in schools but it's mm -hmm. it's not just race it's also are you qualified did you meet the grades did you you know do your extracurriculars did you how did you do on the sat right so it's it may seem like reverse racism but if they are qualified to be in the school you know they're acknowledging those qualifications and you know mm -hmm. they're they're saying like hey you, you know, yeah, we're bringing more attention to race and ethnicity, but it's all, you know, but they're qualified to be here. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so it's, it's, as long as I guess, in essence, is they're qualified, you know, school education wise, and they got the money to go, you know, let them. Right, right, right. So, you know, bringing it back to so let's talk about within the community, um, mm -hmm. within us personally. So you mentioned earlier about, you know, there are people in our community that are wealthier, right? So like cele mm -hmm. black celebrities, for example. So let, let's, mm -hmm. let's bring it to them, right? Are black celebrities, are they supposed to help us, right? Are they, um, you know, are they supposed say to- say that, it goes back to the word entitlement. Right, entitlement. So what about a black I wouldn't say they're go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. So I know I'm thinking like celebrity, but even just any black person who has a lot of wealth, right? Maybe in the one percent or the five percent or what are they supposed to help, you know, those that are in lower income? Okay. Well, I want to answer this question, not necessarily because I don't want to offend people out there who got money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, but I, I, I'll say this. I don't think they should feel in, that we should feel that they should be entitled to help the poor people out. But they have to understand and, and, and should accept that once, you know, they reach that certain level in their career where they have a platform, they should be aware that how much power and clout they have and what they, they can use 
and and should use and using it in a positive manner. Now, as far as the wealth and sharing the wealth goes, I understand that, you know, you share your wealth and that's how you go broke. And so I wouldn't necessarily say it's all about money. You can have so many other ways that you can help out your community without giving money, you know, time, resources, you know, appearing in community events, you know, offering a hand, you know, uh, a, donating some of your old shoes. You know, I know it's, it's one rapper out there that, you know, he buys 150 shoes per month. You know, all the other shoes, and like he stuffs them, buy another one, you know. All them shoes you got, donate it. And so I want to say it's not just the, it, the money does help. It does. But I don't want to say that that's, that's all it takes. That's what you should just, you know, they work hard for that money. It took a long time for them to get to that place, and I understand that. So I, I feel the same way, you know. Once I get to that position to where, I'm in a position to help financially. I will help, but I'm not going to, you know, go broke helping others, so especially those who are not helping themselves. That's also the thing about it. You help those who help themselves. It's a lot of us and being real, you know, having that conversation that needs to be had within our community. It's a lot of us that, that drags us down and have that crab mentality. And so it goes into that notion that everybody can't go with you or even in a biblical sense, you know, you know, some of your family members, everybody can't go with you to the top. But those that you see are trying to make it and, and trying to help others, you help them. If that makes sense to you. Yeah, and, and you said something interesting. I wanted you to elaborate on it, that, you know, you know, you can't help people that won't help themselves. Can you elaborate on that statement? Yes, yeah, so... And, you know, I don't know if you're experiencing your family, but just being you know, in my family, I know I have some people and I know I'm not the only one out there. So that's why, you know, I'm speaking from a personal testament and the whole city touches people in general. But, you know, we you know, all have some of those people in our family, you know, who are hangers on or like to feel entitled because you my family, you're supposed to help me or, you know, those friends as well. You know, some, some sometimes you have friends and, you know. I came across this verse in the Bible, you know, it was one of the, the main people, and I don't want to say get religious or anything, but in the Bible, you know, God told, you know, somebody to leave their family members, don't don't take them with them, and but he couldn't help it, and so he, he took their family members with them, and lo and behold, you know, the family member ended up, you know, taking them for everything, and so, you know, for those that, you know, don't want to get up, get out and do something, you know, they try one time and give up. Or, you know, they, they you know, mooch off of your prosperity and your hard work. You know, those are the people you can't take with you. Even though you want to, you gotta, that's the only way that you're going to elevate your career is when you find that will and that willpower in you to, to lead those people along. And so it's like that sometimes. So that doesn't mean you, that gives you the excuse not to help others. You know, those that are, like I said, are helping themselves or need a helping hand and maybe too proud to ask, you know, help them. And, and it doesn't, like I said, have to always be about money. Sometimes it's donating your time, words of encouragement, you know, physically just being there to support somebody, you know, donating old things that you don't need, you know. Right. And, you know, and you do bring up an interesting point. I think that, you know, and I know we're talking about, you know, with black people, I think anyone that is in a in a position of, of wealth or privilege, I think that you should give back in some way, um, you know, whether it's time, like you said, or whether it's money or, you know, especially if you, you know how to, you know, get from point A to point B, right? You want to bring up the younger generation, right? And I just think there's mm -hmm. this cultural pressure among black people that you have to do that you you're supposed to do that right because black people is. black people are struggling out here right and you happen to be a millionaire and a billionaire like why aren't you building a school why aren't you you know you should be uh you know donating water bottles you know to the people of flint michigan or you know it's you know it, there's this cultural pressure on wealthy black people to actually uh influence their community so um mm -hmm. 
So what, what do you think of that? Do you think there's a cultural pressure within the Black community to, uh, you know, especially for some wealth, Black people who are wealthier, have more privilege, is there a cultural mm -hmm. pressure, you know, for them to contribute or to do something? I'm going to say yes, because although I'm not a celebrity, <laughs> I don't have money like that, I have <laughs> yeah, yeah. pressure from friends and family, you know, I don't, I'm not doing, you know, top notch and living at the top of the, you know, penthouse, but I'm not, you know, doing the worst as I could be. And so sometimes the family members and friends, they lean on me or expect me to help them out, you know, because I'm doing a little bit better than the average person, but, you know, not, not knowing that on the inside, you know, I'm struggling, you know, may not be financially, but, you know, mentally, you know, emotionally, spiritually. And so, uh, yes, I, I felt that, you know, that cultural pressure and, and it's on you, like I said, as a person to, you know, keep that in check when it comes to your mental. And not letting that pressure get to you or, you know, setting boundaries that also helps, you know, um, one thing that I have, uh, uh, proclaim to myself is that when I do make it to the top, yes, I plan on giving back, but no, I'm not going to make, I'm not going to let anybody make me feel like I'm obligated or I have to help out. If I am going to be helping out, it's because, you know, I'm giving from the heart. It's what, you know, what, what God wants me to do and it's what I want to do. It's not because that's what the community is entitled to or I have to do it because I'm part of the community or the cultural pressure. I'm not going to let that get to me. And I don't think Anybody out there that has a platform should, but anybody that has a good conscience and sees the struggle and what's going on out there and has a platform to change it, they should use it. Now, if they don't want to, they don't have to, but, you know, that just makes them a part of the problem and not the solution when they do those types of things. So what you're talking about is there has to be a balance, right? There has to, yeah, you know, you should, you know, uplift the, you know, if you're, in a position, if you're black and you're in a position of wealth or, or any, or privilege, you know, it's, it's, it's moral as a human being to uplift those below you, but there's also a balance. Like you can't do that to the point where you're broke. You can't do that to the point where yeah. you're exhausted and you're, you're sick. You can't do that mm -hmm. to the point where you have nothing yourself. Like you have to, like on an airplane, right, where you have to put on your mask before you put on someone else's mask, right? So you have to, you got to take care of yourself first before you take care of other people. I would say to help elevate the pain, or not elevate, but alleviate the pain, <laughs> or, or the pressure, the cultural pressures that, you know, those who have the platform and that could give, I would encourage you if you're listening, if it gets out there to them to, you know, get involved in their community or have like, you know, start a foundation or organization or get a be a part of an organization. A lot of them do, you know, and that's not, it's a lot of them out there that have their own organizations or that are uh, partners with other foundations, you know, to help get back to the community. And so, you know, hats off to those celebrities that do use their platforms in a positive manner. And uh, for those out there that use their platforms in a negative manner, I hope that they, you know, started, you know, looking at other examples, you know, like the positive ones and start taking after them. But that's, you know, goes back into that question uh, with reparations and how are we going to change ourselves and what is it going to take for us to give our own. Those, that's one of the major, you know, pinpoints of it is, you know, those who have platforms in our community use it for good. Mm. So now, do you think, you know, going back to reparations now, do you, do you think we should... Because I think Tulsa was like a, a black town, right? It was black businesses and, um, you know, before. Yes, uh, in 1920, it was full of, you know, black businesses. The black uh, stock market was there, and it was raided by an angry white mob. It actually went off the days. Um, they sent in, you know, firing bombs, squads for them, uh, water hose, dogs. I actually have it listed and talk about it in my book, again, What If Controversial Paradigm Shift. And uh, it's going to take us going back into that time frame where we had then, you know, at, at that point in time, we didn't have uh, the strength and the courage that we have now to fight back and stand up for our own. And so why not start over and start rebuilding, you know, what we had in the 20s and 
a hundred years ago. And so I think it's time for us to start over now or rebuild, if you will. Rebuild. So do you think we should rebuild to the point of having our own town, having our own city? No, 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 I'm not saying that. Because again, it's not about segregation or, you know, what's it called? Brexit or <laughs> what they call it in London, the Brexit or the Brexit <laughs> Britain. <laughs> it's not about that because it's you know whether we like it or not black and white people we're intertwined There's so many out there you know we, we mix you know it's, it's it's been like this since slavery you know white people got black people in their family and white and black people got white people in their family so there's no getting away from each other what i'm saying is, as far as rebuilding in our community it's just starting that chain a uh, massive chain of black networking all around in all 50 states you know everybody knows everybody some you know country or city or uh, not, not country but you know city or state black business owners you know having conventions and coming together and networking like that over time and just growing that's actually how you know not actually how but that's how you know i, I had got an opportunity to go to chinatown and see how they live and they operate within their culture everything is so tight knit and even though they have you know people on the outside they know people in their community like they have everything <laughs> and, and <laughs> I wish, you know, the black community can take a field trip to the Chinese community and see how they, you know, do their thing when it comes to, you know, coming together and, and, and building one, as one, man. It's just, it, it almost made me cry because I, I see the little kids, you know, walking by and having their books and, you know, little boy, like he's four or five years old and got a trigonometry book. I'm like, what? <laughs> so. <laughs> That, so that also is, goes back into oh go ahead no i saying so <clears throat> so what did you notice about your trip to chinatown you know what did you notice about you know the china what you saw in the chinese community that um maybe we we don't have in the black community because you said when you went there it's like you you wanted to cry and consistent unity yeah what was that it's just saying like how they how the consistent unity consistent like we can come unity. in the black community we can we can come together for a moment in time but we can't keep it going you know what i mean like we can't keep it constant so they have consistent unity or constant unity in their community um i guess i guess what i noticed uh it's just how they they helped each other out like i was on the train and uh, there was an elderly person trying to get on and, you know, people were getting off the train to help that person get on or, you know, just, you know, things like that, things that we don't do in our community. You see somebody walking down the street in New York, you get on these, you say, God bless you, they're going to cuss you out. <laughs> so they don't, we don't have that type of, you know, unity in our community and loving on one another, like how I see them doing it is is that crab mentality for us. And, you know, you know, kicking each other while we down or, you know, dogging each other out in front of the white folks. You know, we do that type of stuff. But what I've seen and noticed different from them is whether they know each other from around the way or not, they're going to stick together because they see they come from the same place. And that's one thing that we don't have, you know, is, is constant, consistent unity and, and sticking to that unknown code. So even if we don't know each other like that, you know, when it's time, you know, clothes rain to come together, that's what we need to do. In their community, they know that. But in our community, we know it, but yet don't want to apply it. And where do you think that comes from, the lack of constant unity, consistent unity? Where do you think that, how do you think that came to be? The centuries of mental bondage and what we had been taught, you know, led to believe I don't want to say, you know, we institutionalize, but sometimes that's, that's how it feels. Like, so it is what it is at times, you know, even starting by going back towards slavery to where, you know, they would, you know, split the light skin and the dark skins and, you know, breathe as the mulattoes were better than the darkies. So hence, that's where, you know, colorism started, where the dark skins start hating the light skins and, and vice versa. Light skins start hating dark skins. And so years and centuries on down the line up until now you see that light skin versus dark skin you know complexity of things going and so it's just things like that you know teaching you know us self-hate 
and not loving our skin and being taught that, you know, black skin, big lips and big nose was ugly. You know, we didn't learn what self-pride was and self-love was until James Brown told us, you know, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Before then, we wasn't saying that. We were, you know, perming our hairs, you know, trying to look, you know, pretty or what, you know, the commercials or the white folks, you know, put as standardized beauty. We were trying to be that. And so it's good to know now we take it back our power, especially like with our women. You know, most of us have stopped perming our hair, started rocking our natural, you know, textures and started loving our skin, you know, our big nose, big lips, big ears, you know. And so it's, that's what it's going to take things like that, reprogramming our mind and breaking ourselves from that mental bondage and mental change. So they're not going to do it. That's what they want us to be, mental change, mental bondage. And so that's, you know, breaking that curse and reprogramming our minds from a negative to a positive that's where, you know, like I said, it fix yourself internally and in, on the outside. Then that's when also the change can start to take place. And so um, that's why I think that's where it all starts, where it started back in the day of slavery, what we were taught, you know. So now, should we blame white people for that? Should Is there, kind of bringing it back to entitlement, is there... Should we put pressure on white people saying, you know, you gave us all these years of psychological damage. Now we want you to compensate us for what, you know, for what your ancestors did or what your family did. So should we put pressure? You know, that's on- a good, that's a good, that's a good question, Gabrielle. And my answer to that question is, is just how I had to face my, my ugly demons when it came to getting my mental health in check. So in general, we can look at this as a black community. And what I've seen was, you know, all that mental stress and anguish that I had went through when I faced that ugly truth in my my mirror and, you know, say that, hey, whatever I went through in my past, you know, childhood trauma, foster care, all the rejection I faced, it wasn't my fault. It was out of my control. But you know what? It's on me. It's my problem to deal with and it's on me to fix because I'm the one that's losing sleep at night. I'm the one that's still hurt by this and and can't move on. Meanwhile, the person that hurt me and caused me pain has moved on to the next victim. And so that's how we have to look at this when it comes to the black community. We cannot expect, you know, white folks in general to acknowledge, for one, what they did in the past was wrong and two, apologize for it. And so three, it's just going to be on us to just take back our power and our control and say, hey, what they did, what they did to me and not my people was out of my control. It was not our fault, but it's on us to go fix. They did this to us, and it's on me to go fix. You know, so that's just what it did. What I had to do, and you know, bump that notion of you know, black people don't do therapy, and I took myself to therapy, and you know, started getting my mental health in check. So that's what it's going to take when it when we're talking about the black community, and you know. Not saying no blame the white folks for what they cost us, but we all know what they've done. You know, yes, they they brought us here on ships and you know changed our names and caused us all these you know racial hardships for centuries. But we have to accept that they're not going to accept any wrongdoing because the never mind the justified is normal for them. So again, it's going to be on us to take back our power and free ourselves from those chains because they're not going to do it. So, you, right. like I said, when it with me personally, when it came to me facing that ugly truth and knowing that I had an issue and needed to go and fix, you know, and if I knew that I still had an issue and didn't want to go fix, then it is my fault. And so now that we know that there is a problem, you know, stemming from our past that we need to go fix, if we don't do so as a whole, then it is our fault. We letting them keep us like this. And, you know, and you... you it's sort of like, you know, for, for lack of a better description, it's sort of like, uh, you know, the abuser abused, you know, relationship and that, you know, if you keep blaming the abuser, right, you're not going to move on. So it's more of accept, accepting the truth. Okay, you know, my abuser is not going to admit, you know, their wrongdoings. So I I'm gonna take it upon myself to to evolve and and move on and improve 
and I'm going to go do what I need to do to heal, right? So I'm going to go to therapy. I'm going to, you know, create my own resources. I'm going to bring, you know, bring people together, right? So I'm not going to look to my abuser, you know, for evolution. I'm going to find it within Mm -hmm. myself. There you go. There you go. Exactly. So now just to 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 tie it all in, so in terms of us as black people, not saying white people are abusers. <laughs> yes. So how are we doing on time, by the way? Let me just interject. Oh, we good. We good. We're, we're fine. No worries. <laughs> I can do the whole hour. <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. All right, all right. I don't want to keep you. All right, so now what should... I'll give you a whole hour of this, so we're good. <laughs> all right. So in terms of... um, Is there such thing as Black entitlement? Like, let's say with... um. Like back in the day, there were black families that owned land and owned actual property and had it stolen by white people, right? You know, are the yeah. are, are descendants entitled? Should they get their land back? You know, is the government? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just with the ugly faces. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, get your money back. Of, of course, and I've actually, uh, you know, Instagram, sometimes they have those little stories, you know, of, you know, history, and they were actually saying of how a family, you know, has been fighting over 100 years. They had their land taken 100 years ago, and they finally were able to give it back after years of going through court uh, with supporting documents and everything. They finally were able to get their land back as well as reparations, and so... I want to also point out reparations is not impossible. It's just probably going to take forever to get. <laughs> um, this this family, the black family uh, uh, out in, I think it was actually Oklahoma, um, that owned like a ranch. And they had it taken away from them 100 years ago. And they finally got it back in 2022. And so, um, yeah, reparations is not impossible. It just might take forever in a day. But, you know. I do agree with you and, and feel that those that had their land, and not just black people, there were a lot, a lot of Native Americans who, who got their land stripped, but they were given reservoirs and, you know, they were compensating. They were given reparations, so to speak. Mm-hmm. We're still waiting. Um, and we might, you know, keep, we're going to have to keep waiting for it unless we, you know, just started taking it back for ourselves. But, um, to those that you know know what they're entitled to and know what is theirs, I say get yours and don't stop until you do. If you got documents, you got the receipts, support, report, excuse me, supporting, you know, your argument that that's your land, this this belongs to you, and you get your land back, you go for yours. So yeah, I'm totally for reparations when it's definitely something that you actually had, you know, your name on a deed and you know you had paperwork showing that you were the previous or the, the legal owner of that property absolutely definitely so what so reparations because you were saying before about it's not something we should just wait for we should just build it ourselves but you're saying that as far as it comes like whites giving us the 40 acres and the views you know that's not gonna come <laughs> <laughs> and them taking that you know accountability or apologizing for what they've done they're not gonna do that um and so I guess in retrospect, what I'm saying is, in a t- in, in tangible way, it's, it's just going to be on us. Like I said, even though they caused it pain and that, that it was out of our control, that's on us to take back our power because this is how they want it. They're not going to, you know, give us something that's going to, you know, over time have us to be to where we're we outdoing them. They're not going to do that. And so that's just it's going to have to be on us as a whole. And it's not going to happen overnight, you know. It's, it's you know, it's going to be something where you have to chip away at it constantly and consistently until you know one day. And that's the, you know the point of my book. You know, I ask that qu- question. You know, what if this was the generation that plants the seed for the next generation or the next? And so you know, we have to try. Not to be so failure, but to try. And so that's what I I'm, I am happy and excited to see for this new this next generation that is coming up. 
you know, they are taking back their powers. You hear a lot of black voices, you know, when it comes to music, when it comes to writing and directing, you know, you, you're starting to see us more everywhere. And so we coming. It's just going to take some time. <laughs> so it'll, it'll happen. I believe it will. I, I see it happen. You know, manifest, plan, and prepare for it. Then it will surely come to you guys. But, you know. It's just gonna take a minute for us to get there, but at least we're now to the point to where we're recognizing the problem and we're breaking those chains. It was once upon a time, not too long ago, to where we didn't. We were complacent and comfortable where we were, but then, you know, 2008, we got a black man in the White House, and then that all changed for us. And then even with, you know, even with you know Barack Obama, like, was there? Did he have, you know, kind of? Was it his responsibility to uplift black people? You know, so I would say I don't think it was his responsibility, but he was the example. He was just, just you know, the poster child, if you will. I think he knew that he was he had to lead by example, you know, for those you know, black people that needed inspiration and uplift them, and that's just what he did. He did a job well done, in my opinion. Okay, so. So wait, did we put that pressure on him to? I'm sure he felt the pressure while he was in office. I mean, yeah. now it looks like you know, see him, him and Michelle living their best life, and I can't be mad at him. Um, but he did do what he, for the most part, what he said that he was going to do while he was running the campaign. You know, some things were out of his control. But for the most part, you know, he, he did do a lot of good things in the office. Um, I'll even say this, even number 45, he did something for the, you know, community. <laughs> he, did, he, he did do something. I can't deny him of that. But in essence of what I've learned from 45, you know, all those four years of being in the house, in the White House and causing that ruckus, you know, what I've learned from him and other people who are like him is that no matter who you are, no matter what you, you know, uh, promote to the public, it's always going to be somebody out there who condones your BS. So therefore, you go where you celebrate it and not where you tolerate it. And so that also what gave me the gusto to write this book in the format that I have written it in a way that it will ruffle some feathers, it will ring some bells, but at least it gets your attention, at least you get gets you talking and having these conversations that needs to be had. So um, those are the, you know, even though you can, you can learn things from people that you don't like to, you, you can learn things from them as well. Of course, of course. All right, so let's 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 wrap let's start to wrap things up here. So I think the message that you know we are putting out is when it comes to the the you know the the government right a government handout we shouldn't expect a government handout when it comes to like reparations when it. I mean, getting your land back, yeah, that's a property issue, right? But in in terms of, like, affirmative action, in terms of, uh, you know, reparations for slavery, whether it's money, whether it's, like, schools or any kind of access to resources, like small businesses, are we saying um, that we should... Ex- I guess I'm just, I'm trying to clarify, what are we saying about, you know, getting things from, like, from the government, from the people in the government? Like, should, should we expect, should we put pressure on, you know, the, you know, people in the government to, uh, you know, to compensate for the actions of slavery? Or should we? I, I, I don't want to be funny here, but I think if we were to ask the government, they'll say that they they have gave us our reparations. They'll say, well, what about food stamp? What about housing? Or what about affirmative action? They'll say, well, that's the way of, you know we paid you guys back. But <laughs> and so, like I said, we, we bat in a thousand when it comes to as far as reparation and acknowledgement of wrongdoing when it comes to past history and slavery, uh, mainly. That's that's. We batting a thousand on that. Now, as far as you know, reparations and entitlement in today's time, um, I don't want to say like I said. We, we I don't want to say that we're entitled because we're not better than anybody. It's mm-hmm. just like everybody else, we gotta get out there and earn our stripes. But um, 
if we want to leg up in the society, is then I say it's going to be on us to do it because you know the white people ain't going to do it. You know, every other you know, I don't want to sound getting mouth of the diarrhea, but it, it seems you know every other outside of race, you know, their perspective of the black community as a whole is that you know we're too aggressive, if you will. So it's not like they would come to our aid as as quick as we were to come to theirs. Um, not all, but, you know, the majority. <laughs> so that's why I gotta keep very, very broad to make sure I'm not, you know, attacking or offending, you know, any group or, you know, certain community. That's not what I'm about, you know. What I'm about is, you know, putting the truth out there, taking accountability, acknowledging, you know, that there is an issue and working on change. We can talk about racism and injustice and, you know, reparations all day, but quite frankly, that's not going to change. We, we can talk, we can create systemic change. Is talking about, you know, those issues and then taking accountability and coming up with ways to create you know, the change. So I think, so it sounds like it's twofold, right? So yes, we should, you know, seek those things. Yeah, right? almost. Yeah. Land, it's not like land ownership, right? Claiming that land ownership back you know, being compensated for slavery. Yes, we should pressure the government to do these things, but that shouldn't be the only thing we should be doing. We should we should build ourselves up as well. You know, we should um, exactly. support, we should support, you know, Black entrepreneurship ourselves by, you know, once in a while, you know, buying Black, as they say, or, uh, you know, building our own schools and, um, you know, educating our people and, you know, not, not thinking. Getting out of the right? Going to therapy. Yeah, yeah, mental health, going to therapy, dealing with your, you know, dealing with your traumas, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, educating yourself, learning how to read, going to school, going to college, right? So we should, mm -hmm. We should lean on the government to give them, give us those things. But at the same time, we should also lift ourselves up and, and build ourselves up. So we should be doing both things. Is is that what I'm getting? Is that the message? Yes and own? no. I guess in, in <laughs> as far as with the government goes and equality goes, just treating us fair and giving us our fair shot, just like how you would with, you know, a person that's of non-color, you know, like I said, treat us how you would want to be treated. And then on the second end to what you said, yes, the second part of it is going to be on us putting in the work. And, and, you know, like I said, you know, you help those who help themselves. And so when you see a person helping themselves, government included, you know, help throw them a bone. And so um, I don't want to, like I said, say that we're entitled, oh, gimme, 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 because mm -hmm. that takes away a person's will power to, you know, get out there and get motivated and, and do something for themselves. So entitlement can be a, a dangerous thing, you know, so you don't want to get too much of it. And so, but I do see where there's a wrong that needs to be right or acknowledgement that, that I don't want to say, like, I guess we're using the word the government now. <laughs> so <laughs> that the government, you know, should do, but we know that they're not. And so I guess where we free ourselves from that mental burden is by letting it go and getting it on our own. That That is my, I guess, summarization of it all. So not depending on reparations, not depending on um, compensation for slavery, but doing things for ourselves. So motivating ourselves to get therapy, motivating ourselves to... Exactly. You can't you know. what you never had. <laughs> <laughs> So not waiting, like, you know, not waiting for the government check, like, where's my reparations, you know, but, hey, you have the opportunity, go educate yourself, go to, you know, go to therapy. Like, if know. the government is paying for me to go back to school, I'm going to take that as an opportunity, mm -hmm. even though you're not paying me reparations, I'm going to take it as an opportunity to better myself. Now, that That's more of an equivalent to reparations within this time. I mean, slavery is over and done with. You know, it's nothing that can be changed about it. I don't want to stay stuck on it, but I do want to acknowledge it and then 
move on, you know, take some serious acknowledgement and, you know, implement ways to change it and to make sure that in this time frame, our people isn't still being faced with that racial injustice that we have been faced with, you know, hundreds of years ago. Mm-hmm. So basically be, 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 be the change you want to be, right? Don't look for other people to change exactly. you. Do it yourself. Do it within the community. Mm-hmm. Is that is that fair to say? Don't look, don't look for yes. other people to change yes. you. You change yourself. Exactly. You're the captain of your own ship. You decide where to navigate the waters. So. Right. Absolutely. And in regards to kind of within ourselves, right? Just you know, again. So if you happen to be in a position of wealth and a position of privilege, yes, you should uplift other people. But don't do it to the point where you're losing yourself or you're going broke or you don't have time for yourself. Mm -hmm. And acknowledging that there are bad apples. Yeah. Right. I mean, keep it real within yourself. That's a part of, you know, acknowledgement and accountability is, you know, hey, there are some bad apples in the black community. There are some bad apples in the white community. It is what it is. But you don't, you know, you dwell on the good and not the bad. That's how you drive out darkness when you dwell on the light. Right. So it's not entitlement, right? It's being realistic, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. no, you, I'm, no, you shouldn't, you know, if you're not qualified to I go say, to the school. <laughs> I guess a better word would be self worth or self fulfillment. So self fulfillment, knowing, you know, what you're worthy of and, and, and what you're, have a I don't want to say entitled to but you know have a right to as like as everybody else you know who wants to live that American dream you know have that you know that garage you know home and you know home cooked meal when they come home just mm-hmm. like white men expect you know there's a black man out there having that same dream and so um as far as what the government goes expecting you know reparation is not going to come but we do expect or I do expect and hope for them to you know start treating us fairly Absolutely, absolutely. But, and we have the right to pursue that dream as everybody else. So we're not entitled to it. Yep. It shouldn't be handed to us just because we ask for it, you know, but we, we have the right to pursue it. We have the right to achieve it. There you go. And anybody tries to impugn on it, right? <laughs> then that's me absolutely. <laughs> All right. All right. Yes, All right. Ma'am. But- Yes, and but and also why it's on my mind. I do want to take this time since we're talking about, you know, what's it going to take for us to, you know, get our reparations back in regards to, you know, mental health, especially being at the Black History Month. I definitely want to advocate and put this out there to anybody listening, you know, that's struggling with any type of mental anguish or illness, you know, bipolar, you know, uh, depression, feeling suicidal, you know, even being bullied, you know, you know, the teens out there and peer pressure out there as an adult. It's even worse, sir. And so, but please know that it is okay to not be okay, but never, ever, ever sit there and not be okay. If you need to, or if you know anybody that may need these mental health resources, please share it with them. The crisis hotline number is 1 800 273 8255, or you can text their call 988, or you can text 741 741. Or for those that would prefer, you can go online to mentalhealthishealth.us or 988lifeline.org, or for those that uh, would prefer in a part of the African-American community, visit NAMI.org, that's spelled N-A-M-I.org. Uh, and again, just remember to do your own homework and find what works best for you. You know, you are the captain of your own ship, and so um, you decide to where to navigate the waters. Beautiful, thank you so much for that. And on that note, we are going to jump to the promo. So different, thank you so much for uh, tackling this topic with me today. And thank you for coming back on Hot Topics. Thank you guys. And don't forget my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift is available on my website. Again, differenceworld.net. I have it in my uh, title line as well as uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, Don't forget to subscribe there. I definitely appreciate all the love and support that I am getting. And again, thank you, Gabby, for having me back on your show. Happy to be here. Uh, Keep doing your thing. Um, and don't forget anybody out there listening and watching, don't forget to manifest a plan and prepare for whatever it is in life that you want. And then it will surely come to you guys. 
difference world come and learn all right thank you so much so again if i mean if you have to run uh go ahead i'm just going to just you know shout out your contact information here so you guys you can learn all about different um you know her business her books go to our website differenceworld.net you can also follow her on twitter it is uh difference third eye there's a three in there all this information will be in the description if um you know if you're watching this on youtube um or well facebook it's scrolling below at the bottom of the screen so the contact information is available. It's also in the description if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're listening to this on audio, whether it's Spotify or uh, iHeartRadio or all those other podcast platforms, this information is in the description. So check it out. But I will say her website, it is differenceworld.net. She is also on Twitter. She also has two Instagram accounts. I want to bring that out there. She has two of them. <laughs> Oh, you have one? Just one. Yeah, okay. just the uh, Third Eye Entertainment Agency. That's the one I'm active on. So I'm just going to make a quick edit here. Okay. So, correction. <laughs> there is one Instagram, one Instagram account, Third Eye underscore Entertainment underscore LLC. Sorry about that, guys. And her YouTube channel, no. Difference World YT, come and learn. So she is on YouTube. So all of her contact information is scrolling below at the bottom of the screen for my video people and for my audio people. I did not forget about you. All of this information is in the description. So I encourage you to follow Different on all of her social media accounts. I also encourage you to go to her website to learn more about her business and about her book. And she did talk about it earlier. The book is called What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift? You can purchase that book right now. Just go to her website, differenceworld.net, and you can purchase her book right there. Uh, is there anything you want to promote and you want to talk about your business or anything else about your book you want us to know? Um. Yeah, I'm, 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 I just my YouTube channel is where I'm really active on right now. Just trying to build, you know, with subscribers, dropping my travel vlogs and motivational vlogs. So uh, definitely just directing traffic and you know call to action, asking for subscribers. Uh, so definitely, you guys, if there's any you know social media you go to, definitely go to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm, I also do motivational speaking. So if anybody out there that's looking for any speakers to be a part of any grassroots conversations, you can go to my website, differenceworld.net, and you can book me. I am free of charge as of now. Uh, what else we got going on? Uh, that's why you got to come to Difference World and come and learn. It's always something going on with the girl. Um, I got a couple more podcast interviews I'll be doing. Um, I'm dropping another travel vlog tonight on my YouTube channel. So just got a lot going on. <laughs> but yeah, thank you again for having me on your show. Um, just remind you, you are queen and you got a crown in your head and you are rocking it all so well. And you keep doing your thing and keep shining and keep pressure on the neck. Uh, until next time, and definitely, you know, hope I get another invite back. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You know, I'll definitely keep you in mind. Thank you again mm -hmm. for coming on the show. I appreciate it. All right, I'll... All right, guys, welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed just as much as I did listening in on our audio interview I did with the Hot Topics podcast. Big shout out to my girl, Gabrielle. Definitely, you guys, show her some love. I dropped her, her YouTube page on at the description as well as her uh, podcast channel. So be sure to check her out and show her some love. I definitely just want to uh, send love to her real quick and remind her that she's a queen and she has a crown on her head and she's rocking it oh so well out there in uh, New York. So tis to my hooligans out there in Brooklyn, everybody out there acting a the fool. Um, had a very good time as you guys seen uh, just talking about entitlement and uh, as you know do I feel that black people are entitled and if you guys got the gist of that that interview and seen the explanation of my answer you will see in some portions of parts I do feel that you know black people are entitled as far as you know our rights to believing and knowing that we are kings and queens and never forgetting where we come from uh, as well as uh, not letting people look down on us and putting their foot on our neck or, or taking the yoke 
off of our neck. That's our right and that's what we're entitled to, you know, to live our lives just the way everybody else is, you know, happy, free, and, and, and able to walk down the street without being harassed or profiled, more so to speak. And so, if you guys liked uh, my interview and uh, enjoy watching and listening in on my podcast interview, you guys can definitely show me by liking, sharing, comment, and or definitely subscribing to my YouTube channel. I do appreciate all the love and support that I am getting. Please keep it coming, you guys. Don't stop. Uh, moving on, what else we got going on in Different School other than you guys going to my website and checking out all my other social media handles, my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, as well as my TikTok. Uh, of course, my YouTube channel, but you guys are already here. Uh, definitely just go to my uh, website, differentschool.net. Also, you guys, if you're interested, anybody out there that's listening or watching me who would like me to be a part of any type of grassroots conversations, it does not matter. I, I speak at elementaries, middle school, uh, uh, um, virtual, uh, whatever the case may be. If you'd like for me to be a part of it, any place where, you know, there's advocating and pushing for mental health awareness, I'm there. And so just go to my website and book me, differentschool.net. I am free of charge as of now, but of course, that's why you have to go and book your girl in advance. <laughs> okay. Uh, also, you guys, don't forget, uh, before you leave my website, be sure to get your copy of my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift? Again, a book that's written to encourage and inform thought-provoking conversations about injustice and racism in, in, in America. And I've done this through graphic and provocative illustrations, you guys. So please, please, I can't stress it enough. Be advised that it is intended for a mature audience because it does have sensitive content. And so if you can't take this type of heat, still come on to the kitchen. Even if you don't want to, just bring a fire blanket. Um, you know, that's the point of the book is to have these conversations that need to be had that are often swept under the rug. It is my theory and my belief that when we constantly and consistently have these conversations and, and push towards um, a different trajectory than where we are going, there is where we can see systemic change, in my opinion. Um, now, whether if it goes nowhere fast, that's not the point. The point is nothing beats a failure but a try. So again, go to my website, differencewell.net, and get your copy of my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, you guys. Thank you so much for all the love and support that I am getting. Again, like I said, keep it coming and don't stop, you guys. I'm, I'm just getting started, so to speak. And, you know, five years from now, I can't wait to look back on my journey and seeing, you know, just how far I've come and, you know, just how many, how many people I've helped and how many people I have inspired and who have inspired me. And so uh, it's all a stepping stone, you guys, and I truly appreciate it. And I'm enjoying the journey as I, I go through it. Um, what else we got you guys going on in different school? Tomorrow is Thursday. Uh, so, you know, on Thursdays, uh, we do our pop culture, our movie review. I think one I want to do, of course, keeping it uh, in topic and in, in the genre of Women's History Month, I wanted to cover uh, the, um, the controversial movie of She Said, uh, which deals with um, basically the Me Too movement of women in today's society stepping up and speaking out and against sexual harassment in the workplace environment. And so uh, it's going to be very interesting. I have never seen this before. And so that's why you guys got to hit that notification bell. So when I drop the content, you guys come and learn about it and uh, see what's going on in the girls' world. Yeah. So be on the lookout for that, you guys. It's coming up soon. Um, moving on on agenda, a different agenda. What else we got going on? Uh, mental health check time, you guys. Let's go ahead and get that out the way even though that's the things we do at last but it's most important everybody anybody out there including myself that's going through any type of mental stress anguish or illness please know that it is okay to not be okay but do not sit there and not be okay go get help whatever the case may be talking with a therapist a family member a friend picking up a hobby whatever the case may be that helps you from going off the deep end and possibly taking anybody with you do it. If you know or you know anybody or you need it yourself, uh, these mental health resources, please feel free to share it with them or yourself. <laughs> the crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255 or you guys can call or text 988 or text 741741. And for those that would prefer to go online, you can check out mentalhealthishealth.us or you can visit 988lifeline.org 
or for those that are outside of the U.S. and like watching your girl's YouTube channel, you guys can check out EnCounseling.com. Again, that is spelled E-N-C-O-U-N-S-E-L-I-N-G.com. And remember, you guys, even though I'm giving you these mental health resources, um, it is on you to do your own research and your own homework and find what works best for you. Because again, remember, you are the captain of your own ship and you decide where to navigate the waters, okay? Also, don't forget, you guys, whatever trial and tribulation that you are going through, please know that you are not alone and this too shall pass. So do not go off the deep end because it's not worth it. Okay? All right, you guys. So bringing the background to the more positive side and energy, like I say, you guys, I know talking about mental health is not a negative thing. It's, it's, a, it's a topic that needs to be addressed, but it's also a very somber thing. And it's hard not to get depressed talking about depression. And so I always try to draw it back to that positive energy and that positive side and before we close out and dip as well. And so with that being said, you guys, definitely um, make sure, again, like, share, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Again, I hope you guys enjoy listening in on my podcast interview. Again, big shout out to my girl, Gabrielle. Be sure you guys show her some love and honor Women's History Month. She's a dope lady doing her own thing and, and pushing uh, to put good uh, positivity, excuse me, that's a better word for it, positive vibes out to you know, society and the environment. And I, that's what I love and to, to be around the people that, that good off, give off that good energy. And so that's who I try to surround myself with. So big shout out and much love to her for having me on her show and giving me the chance and opportunity. And I definitely want to try to return the favor by showing her some love. So you guys definitely check her out on Hot Topics as well as her YouTube channel, which is in the description below. Yeah. Okay. And so that being said, you guys, we're going to move on now. Again, hit that subscribe button for your girl. And remember, whatever it is in life that you're feeling you're destined for, you got to manifest, plan, and prepare for it, and then it will surely come to you guys. Different world. Come and learn. Peace. What if? What if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slaves trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift is a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America through graphic but provocative illustration? What if provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical? What if? A controversial paradigm shift by author Different. Go to differenceworld.net.